Hey everyone, I run D&D and Savage Worlds games via Fantasy Grounds. And I have a lot of people that ask me questions about Fantasy Grounds. And they want to know, you know, how, well one, how much it costs. Two, how easy it is to set up a encounter in Fantasy Grounds as a DM. Well, first of all, cost. Let's talk about cost a minute. Um, there is a, um, you do have the option to do a subscription for an ultimate license, which is around $10 to $11 a month. Um, you can buy a standard license, which will allow you to connect with other standard licenses and play D&D. Or you can have an ultimate license, which will allow you to DM with people with the demo. So I have an ultimate license myself, and so my players just have to have the demo. And also, you make your book purchases inside of Fantasy Grounds. And your players will be able to gain access to read those books as well when they're connected to your table. Which, that's what I really like about Fantasy Grounds. So instead of buying physical books, I uh, buy, buy the electronic version through Fantasy Grounds. They do have a license for Pathfinder, d d Call of Cthulhu, Savage Worlds, almost everything Savage Worlds creates is on here. I'm a big Savage Worlds player, so and I love that. So I'm going to show you using the 5th uh, edition SRD data. I'm going to show you how to set up a small little encounter uh, so your players can try out Savage Worlds. Or not Savage Worlds, but Fantasy Grounds. So first of all, you would hit Create New Campaign as the DM. You'd give it a name here. So... I could type today and then you would select your game here um, I'm sl selecting the rule set for fifth edition and over here is just a few little customizations you can do I like the wizards theme so we'll click on that um, a little bit about this as well so you have the ability to let people into your games by giving them a alias instead of an IP address this is my internal IP address I'm not going to show you my external IP address but what will happen is you give them, instead of your IP, you give them this phrase here. and Or you can just generate new aliases like this as well. And this stays with you as long as you've got Fantasy Grounds. Now, it's very important once you set up your port forwarding on your router to run the test. And it'll tell you if it's successful or if it's failed. And, you know, being on a laptop, mine has a tendency to reset every so often. So it'll probably say it's failed right here. If it does, I'll just change my port, say, port forwarding failure. So I just need to change my port forwarding before my next D&D game. So, and, but right here, again, it's the alias. And um, it doesn't turn on until once they get in, once you get into your table. So they can't get into your computer without your table being up. So we'll hit start. Now, once you're in Fantasy Grounds here, you'll get this window here to pop up. The first thing you do as a DM is you need to set your library up. And it's coming down here to this button here. And you need to activate the modules. Since we're just activating the SRD, so we'll come over here to the D&D Basic Rules. We'll hit Load here for the players and Load here for the DM rules. Um, I do believe the uh, monsters are contained in the DM pack here. Now, you'll notice here on the player rules, there is a check, green check, and over here in the DM rules, there is a red X. So, what that means is the players have access to this module if they click on the library. And then, as your DM, since they don't have access to that, they'll be that. But you can actually change that by grabbing this little check mark down here and dropping it right there. But you always want to double check this because you don't want them, if you're playing a a um, module you don't want them to gain access to that module and read ahead so you can close this and then you have the abilities to to look at the the books here I'll click on the players information so you click here and you can go to the tables you know this will give you different tables you can hit roll on and it'll give you the information for the table over here they can go to create their characters here this is all it's in the basic rules and uh, the reference manual is pretty cool and I'll show you this whenever we um, get done I'll show you what the uh, the player's handbook reference manual looks after you purchase it 
but they can click here and they can go through the step by step on how to create your character picking your races and all this so the first thing we do as a DM is we're going to create a storyline so we come over here and we right click in this area and come down here to create item and we're going to name it Riverside Encounter okay you find some kobolds if I can type next to the river now you can have different types of text here this right here is what I would call player note um, you could also come in here to paragraph types and change it to like a chat frame body text which is what we're in now headings which is the like the name right here the Riverside Encounter you can make a list you can insert links and tables. So like if I wanted to say, have the cobalt say something when they find them, I'd click here and I would type in here, you will die and then hit enter, I'm done. And so then also what I would do is I need to get my stat sheets for my cobalts. So I come over to NPCs, okay. And then I come down here to find the cobalts. So anything that you have listed or loaded at the moment, you will have your monsters for in here. So we have cobalt. And I would just drag this right here. That's your cobalt. If you click on the little dragon head, you will get your, you know, your player sheet for the cobalts for the NPCs. And close this out. Now we can close this out. Now we can lock this right here, which means you can't accidentally change it or delete it. And, um, until you unlock it, which I normally never do that. So I'm going to hit the X here. So we have our story. I'm going to set this aside here. Now we, we're going to need our map. So we click on maps and images. So what I would do here is I would find a map that I have that I've um, downloaded previously and um, or created, and I would just drag it into this window from Windows Explorer, and now I have a map. I grab this one off of Reddit, and then I just click on the map. Now, I want to set my um, spacing for, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our grid size. So we'll right click over here and choose layers, and then we'll choose our grid. And you can actually right here switch between uh, square or hex grid. So what we'll do is we'll come inside of our square here and draw a little square lined up with the images and it sometimes gets a little off as you can tell up here that's why when I create maps I don't create them with uh, the lines there already and I normally use hex myself but I grabbed this one off reddit real quick so uh, now the next thing we would do is we're going to pin our encounter now this pin is only visible to the DM so what you do here is you can take the little you grab over here well we actually we just duplicated it but you grab your little dragon head and you drop your pin and so when you click on that if we close out the story if you click on this you have your encounter so say your players are over in this region up here and you want to say you know roll a spot check and if they notice the cobalt's behind the bush or the tree or whatever that is um you know you can then come over here and say like the cobalt's yell at you and click on the chat bubble and they can read you will die over here in the chat window and then you could start your encounter to start your to start your encounter first thing you would need to do or your combat is come over here up to the combat tracker in the upper right hand corner click on it and then you would drag the uh, when your players log in they will have little icons up here at the top you would drag the icons into the combat tracker and then you would come over here and drag cobalts into the co uh, the tracker as well you would have everybody roll initiative for you that would be coming over here and clicking on the sword and grabbing your initiative stat and dropping it into the chat window and what this will do is it will take and 
put all your your players and your NPCs in the correct initiative lineup. And once you start, you would come up here and hit the, you know, cycle through each player as it's their turn, you know, by clicking next actor. And then when the characters, you know, do their combat and die, and they die, you can award their XP. And that's pretty much it for simple combat and setting up a, a quick little encounter. I really enjoy Fantasy Grounds. It's uh, it's pretty awesome. So let me show you what I was talking about a minute ago in the library. If you come down here, let me click on the modules, and I will show you... Let's see here. Here's my player's handbook. So I'm going to load it real quick. And then I would give my players access to it as well. So we're going to come down here to the the player's handbook. We're going to click on it. And then we're going to come down here. Uh, well, first I'll show you like the classes. You have all the classes that's in the player's handbook. All the races and everything. But if they want to read the player's handbook like it is in the physical book, they come down to reference manual. And then they choose player's handbook. And they can click through the entire player's handbook. Here's your introduction, your worlds of adventure. They put the artwork in here. Using this book. How to play. Creating your character. And they, they did a really good job about you know, building this out for everybody. Um, this pretty much is exactly what's in the book. Uh, just a little bit of editing differences as well. You know, whenever you uh, want to click on your races, you can come over here and just click on it and it'll pull it. So um, when you click over here, it, it does provide links. Um, so you can jump around in it as well. As, instead of having to go in here, like if you want to click on races, you know, you click on the little dragon heads and it'll jump you between everything you need to know. And you can click on your stats, or not your stats, but like descriptions of all the different races and things like that. But, you know, hopefully I'll be able to make some more videos about Fantasy Grounds. I, I do plan on doing some uh, videos of actual gameplay with me and my uh, players. I do run, as I said, a 5th edition game, um, so a few Savage Worlds games. And I'm trying to get a little bit more into Pathfinder as well. Um, but hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. Um, I like, comment down at the bottom. Subscribe if you find this useful. I'll be coming up with a little bit more tips and tricks. Thank you. Y'all have a great and wonderful day.